Hi everyone, it's Killshot 99 Dead, and this is The Walking Dead Season 9, Episode 11. More spoilers. Yes, as many of you probably found out with our 11 o'clock stream, there was a major, major Amazon bug that was out there that several people have watched this episode early. Apparently, they were able to go in and watch episode number 10, let it run all the way through, and then catch episode number 11. So these comments are coming from people that have watched it already and have seen it. So if you don't want to know spoilers, confirm spoilers, a little bit more detail. Turn away right now. I do have to give you a warning. But if you do like spoilers and you do want to hang out and you do want to talk about some stuff, then uh, we're definitely going to talk about it. So I started out when I saw the mini spoilers that was out there, I guess on Thursday, and the episode seemed a little weak. So, And I said, look, more information could come out, and I will change my mind. I gave it a 5 early. I read through some stuff. I gave it an 8. I'm actually going to raise it to an 8.5 because I've seen the spoilers, I've read the spoilers, and then I went back and sort of analyzed how they're going to relate to future episodes. And I'm going to say it's going to be better than we initially thought. And I'm cool with that because... Um, that number was pulling my overall score down for the season. And I said, it doesn't matter. One episode's not going to change my mind. But now it's going to be right about on par with the season. I think an 8.5, and it could even be better uh, once you see some of the dynamics. So we're going to go through. Uh, we're going to walk through what goes down. I know a couple people in the stream have seen it as well. Um, you guys know about the flashbacks. You know about Jerry. You know about Jesus, some of that stuff. And I'm not going to go in any particular order, but I'm going to go with some things that have to do with themes. So th the gate scene where... Alpha and Daryl really have the standoff. And why I think this is important is because it's this battle of wills. And I know that we wanted Alpha to kind of execute somebody or do something really daring. But she's testing them as well. When Daryl said something along the lines of, we got enough firepower to light you up. Well, Daryl is kind of letting them know what they have. And, and she's, she's trying to get a feel for how they can attack. And she's like, well... We got a baby. So you can have all the firepower in the world, but she's testing their weakness as well. Before we get into that, let's jump over to Valar with the super chat. What's up, Valar? Hello, 99 Army. Kill Steph, Emmy, Kale, Sweet Tommy, sponsors, patrons, and of course, all the super chatters. Thank you so much, Valar. Appreciate you being here. Um, I may have some on a totally side note, nothing to do with, uh, well, a little bit to do with The Walking Dead. I may have some big news tomorrow. Um, so hold tight. I can't tell you about it yet because it may not happen until Friday, but either Monday, tomorrow, or Friday, I have some news for you guys. I know everybody's like, come on, just tell us, but we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, so we got the gate, we got the baby, we've got this Henry, Enid, Daryl, Tara dilemma. What's up, Pete D? Pete D super chatted up. Thanks, Kills Mods, for some great streams today. Um, e Beach, I have not seen it. But I've read enough of it that I feel like I've seen it. So thank you so much, Pete D. And um, Pete, if you watch the streams, I'm sure you saw my uh, red fair. And I think Pete's happy because I did throw the prediction of Tara out there. So it, it's not, Jennifer, it's not Walking Dead related, di directly related. But just hold tight. I'll let you guys know tomorrow. I'm pretty happy about it. Um, so... This episode is going to go down into something. The reason I raised it from an 8 to an 8.5 is because you guys know me. I love the psychology of the episode. As long as it's not too much talking and too much filler, there's got to be a balance of action and a balance of meaning to the psychology. And many people were, you know, they were anti-Lydia. And now you're going to see something tonight where Lydia is willing to go back because she knows that Alpha will kill Luke and Alden. So here you see this young girl who knows. Uh, she It's a balance, right? She, she almost is mentally enslaved to Alpha. But she also has enough wherewithal to say, if I don't do this, then these people are going to die. So you're going to start to really feel a connection with Lydia. And you're going to feel sorry for her. And, and I think it'll, op it'll pave the way for her to leave that group at some point, to be rescued at some point. And that's what a lot of the story is about. Um, there's also some some back and forth between Henry and Daryl, where Henry's going to talk about the scars. And the, the scars just show that Daryl has done some things for the group. And, and it's kind of eating at Henry a little bit, like, well, how can you just give her back? Well, Daryl didn't want to give Lydia back. Tara's involved in that decision. I think Enid kind of justifies it a little bit. 
But ultimately, Daryl makes the call and does the trade-off to save the other two people with the the blessing of Lydia. So when Lydia is cool with it, it it's kind of by committee. Um, but it's just eating at Henry, and you know that Henry wants to go after, and of course, he is going to go after. He's going to write a letter. And I'm going to fast forward to the end of the episode, and then we'll go back. Connie is in some trouble, but Connie will ultimately help out. So Connie has, Alpha throws the baby down. And from what I've heard, and Ellis, have you seen this? Um, And I think Ellis did. Apparently, Alpha has the woman with the crying baby lay the baby down. And Alpha's just looking at the baby like she's waiting on these walkers. Like she's getting ready to take some enjoyment out of the walkers eating the baby. Is that correct? Did, Did I read that correctly? Because several people have told me that. If so, then, okay, forget it. Alpha doesn't need to kill anybody. She's waiting for a walker to devour a baby. That is just as bad as her executing Luke or Alden. I mean, that is, that is nuts. Like, when, when's it going to happen? Just hold on. Watch this. But Connie in the cornfield does save the day. Connie will come out shooting a slingshot. You got Tammy. You got Earl. You got Daryl. A few people are are really going to help. So Connie, you know, the whispers pull their weapons. Um, but Connie makes it out alive. The baby will be adopted. The baby will become Earl and Tammy Rose. They've Look, they've been through a lot. Former alcoholic. Um, lost their son. They're going to take care of this baby. But as we've heard from future rumors that are out there, there could be a showdown between Earl, Tammy Rose, the baby, and Alpha, where Alpha is there to get the baby back. Like Chili's, I want my baby back, baby back, baby. No, you get it. You know where I'm going with that, though. But that's a future storyline. There's a lot that's going to go down with Alpha. It is going to be, she is nuts. But Connie got the baby. Connie's in that situation. But here's the the thing. Why would Daryl, Connie, and Dog go after Henry. Lydia goes back. Now, of course, Lydia's going to say, hey, mom, good to see you. Bap. Don't call me mom. You call me alpha. She's going to slap her down for calling her mom. She's not going to be treated like a child anymore. So we see alpha wanting a baby to be eaten. Then she slaps her daughter, tells her not to call me mom, says, call me alpha. But then they leave. Henry goes after him in the middle of the night. Yeah, it was sound effects. Um, Connie, Daryl, and Dog will go after him. Now, this is what I like about this team. I know a lot of people are saying, yeah, Daryl and Dog should go, but why Connie? Well, first of all, Connie is a extremely caring person. And she's going to feel for Lydia in this situation. But from a strategic standpoint... You've got some pretty good senses here. So maybe it doesn't make sense to the viewers, but it certainly makes sense from a storyline because you've got Connie who has these amazing heightened senses because she's deaf. So all of her other senses, she has this, you know, the sense of of something watching her, feel her eyesight, all these things are super, super high alert. You've got dog, dog is super high alert too. The dog can track them down. Then you got Daryl. Daryl is a tracker. So these three, I think, are probably the three best not to be detected. And I'm looking forward to it. Plus, for the most part, other than Daryl, you know, Daryl's done some silly things like driving dump trucks, into sanctuary. But other than that, Daryl has not been real big on the redundancy. And this is what I mean by that. Like, you know, Luke and Alden go out and people go out and find them and people go out and find them. Daryl's a tracker. Daryl's more to the point. Daryl's usually not the one getting in trouble. He's usually, other than the the dumpster, you know, the dump truck, Daryl's usually the one bailing them out. And I think um, 
we can also it gives Daryl a little more airtime. I know a lot of people said Daryl needs more airtime. Daryl's a star of the show, so you're gonna get it. All right, now let's get to, this is going to be fun. This is why I actually raised it initially from the 5 to the 8, and then from the 8 to the 8.5. So all I had was a couple, you know, taglines and spoilers about the kingdom, and they're out finding some stuff, and they want to find a bulb. But apparently this, um, this, excursion that that the kingdom zone is going to be a lot of fun that they're out there looking for stuff they're rummaging it it's going to it, it almost feels like that glenn noah type of thing but you can even see the picture where jerry the walkers so they're trying to find stuff and we, and we get this amazing dialogue between carol and ezekiel where initially it's like ezekiel wants to go find the bulb because he wants this fair he wants the the kids to be able to um, watch a movie, and Carol's probably like, don't get your hopes up. You know, they go back and forth. Like, when one is super motivated, the other one keeps them humble, and when the other one's down, they build, they build each other up really, really good. Um, Sheila Beasley, I'll ask what everyone's minds, when will we see Beta? Um, let's super chat it up. When you, I'm going to say Beta is 12. I'm going to say next week, that we're going to get into the, the Red Fair a little bit, and I think that's going to be the introduction to Beta. Let's see what you guys think. You guys with me on that? Um, first of all, I think we'll see Beta with Henry. And then after Henry gets kind of taken captive, then I think we're going to see a little bit of the uh, fair. So the first scene I'd say with Beta will be Henry trying to hit him with a stick. Then he's like, throws Henry in the bag. We saw him dragging somebody in a bag, right? Here, take little Henry. I got to go back and I got to go up to the hilltop. So I think it's going to be both. All right. Cool. Let's get back to this kingdom thing. So a lot of the action tonight is going to, and you can even see the walkers in the picture. So the walkers, the kingdom, um, apparently Jerry has these gloves on. They're trying to take care of it. He wraps this bulb in bubble wrap, and then he drops it. doesn't break, um, but it's going to be in an area where walkers are surrounded, and it's going to be hard to get to. But some of the back-and-forth dialogue is really what I'm interested. Like I said, I haven't seen it, and I'm looking forward to um, how the Ezekiel Carroll dynamic plays out because I think there's a lot of foreshadowing where – um, at one point, Ezekiel is going to say, you know, we get to a point where we don't have to keep losing people. Um, I'm going to read a couple things from some other people that, that had said this was a little bit of foreshadowing shadowing as well. Um, they had said Ezekiel shown was ready to give up on the bulb and Carol. So initially, they didn't want to go out there to find it. But then when it's lost, Ezekiel's like, well, forget about it. And Carol's like, no, this is what we came here for. So you'll see a little bit of that back and forth. Um, and apparently they have an amazing kiss as well. We uh, also allegedly, Ellis, is this, uh, is this true as well? Because I haven't seen it. Allegedly, and I had quoted this earlier, it's been posted that Alden and uh, Enid have their, uh, their lovemaking scene. So uh, that's out there, getting it on, um, foreshadowing, as we talked about, they talk about being done with losing stuff for a while, like maybe we won't lose anybody else, um, Henry would love a movie night, I just think there's so much in this episode that is going to prepare us for 12 and 13.
Ellis, is that a did happen or didn't happen? Because the source that uh, was quoted earlier did say there is that. If if not, I, I'm cool if it doesn't happen. But it does. It does definitely sound like it's got a lot of solid events that are going to happen tonight. I didn't know if Ellis gave it a thumbs down. It's a bad scene or a thumbs down that it didn't happen. And one of the big, um, I guess, effects that they used tonight, apparently they changed the sound in Connie's perspective. Okay. All right, so, Ellis, it's implied. Um, but I'd also heard that when you're in Connie's perspective, if, you know, with the baby, and that the sound is, is drowned out. So you kind of feel what she's feeling as well. And I'm, I'm interested in seeing that too. Um, I'm going to jump around here just to see if there's a couple other things. Oh, this was um, this was some other foreshadowing that came out of tonight. And I talked about this on the uh, noon episode of the Red Fair. There is... A line between Tammy and Earl as they've adopted the baby about Earl giving up blacksmithing. So if that's not a big warning sign for the future, Earl about to retire, Earl and Tammy got a brand new baby, no. I'm sorry. I think it's going to be Tammy Rose. I don't think it's going to be Earl. But I think Earl will keep the baby. I think Earl's going to be a single dad. We both single dads from the Midwest. Let's talk about it. What do you guys think? You guys think that um, Earl will be a uh, single dad on the show and Tammy Rose will get the pike? Leave your thoughts and comments. That's that's not a spoiler. I'm just uh, I'm kind of bold predicting that. And let's see. I'm going to see if there's like one or two other things. That we might have missed. I think we covered almost the uh, the whole thing. Uh, there was the uh, flashback scene, and we found out that Jerry and Nabila have three kids. Wow. Looks like uh, Jerry and Earl might have a lot to talk about if uh, if we lose Nabila and uh, Tammy Rose. So I'm just going to throw that out there for some bold predictions. It's not going to happen tonight. Looks like still there's no uh, no major death. So that's all I got from the spoilers. Uh, a lot of the dialogue. Anyone that's seen the episode, uh, go ahead and chime in right now. I know, Ellis, you said you saw it. A couple other people have seen it. So any other thing that were major events that I've kind of glossed over, didn't talk about in the spoiler But what I'm particularly going to be looking for tonight is the exchange between Alpha and Daryl. I want to see who's playing who. I mean, she's got a lot of guts to walk up to the gate. I'm not going to lie. I also want to see if Lydia starts to to win me over a little bit. Apparently, Lydia's also, she's got the clothes that Henry, Henry uh, brought her. She's cleaned up a little bit. She doesn't look like she's been out there in the wild eating worms. So I think um, cosmetically, that's probably going to wear on us a little bit more. We're going to see her a little bit more normal um, than, than as a savage. You know, there's some things the writers can do to try to, uh, you know, try to push that. I don't think that the... I don't think AMC is successful with Henry. Would you guys agree with that comment? Of all the things that look very good in, in tonight's episode and previously, and I, I don't want to sway you. I just, I don't like him. I think, I think the acting is bad. I think the character is poorly written. And I think his story is completely dragging down from 
the success that all the other wonderful performances. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying this to be critical of Matt. I'm just saying this, the way they write Henry's kind of reactions, it just irks me. It, it's, it's unlike any character I've seen on The Walking Dead. And, and I think it's, it's a big miss by AMC because I think that they thought that people would gravitate a little bit more. I, like, I didn't like Enid, but I like Enid more than Henry. And I probably will like Lydia more than Henry. It, and it's not like he's bad. It's just something about it just doesn't feel right about, about how the character goes about things. It, it's almost as if he's that, that kid that always has to tell the adults that he knows more about them than they know about themselves. And what bothers me about it is that they're writing the characters to kind of back off. Like, for example, Henry should not be qualified to tell Daryl about himself, but he does it, and Daryl just kind of backs off from it, which, which that bothers me a little bit. It's like, well, I'm glad my mom likes you. Um... You seem like somebody that used to throw people against walls, but I don't think you're really that kind of person anymore. Well, Daryl, you know it's wrong. We shouldn't just hand her over. And then Daryl's just like, hey, kid, that's, that's just the way it goes. There's a lot of shit in this world. You know, it's like that. But I want Daryl to say, hey, little ass, just get the hell out of my face. I know what I'm doing. That's what I want Daryl to do because that's what Daryl would do. Daryl would not just back off to Henry over and over and over again. He He just kind of, Walks away from it. Walks away from it. Like Henry has the psychological edge over Daryl. And I don't want Henry to have the psychological edge over Daryl. That's, that's it. That's what I can put my finger on with the relationship. That's what I don't like about Henry. So, there we go. We got William Finney. Super chatting it up. William Finney says, sorry for the subject change. <laughs> that's fine. It's a timely subject change because I was about to get on another rant. That would have been rant number two this week. We would have been doing it. Um... And I'll get back up to Drama King in a second. So, Kills, I'll buy you a ticket if you come to um, Sonoy Dead Bash Memorial Day weekend. I want to shake your hand and say thanks in person. Tell me to add a cart and it's done. Um, we will talk about it. And Drama King, I'll get back to that in one second. Drama King, The Walking Dead tends to keep characters we don't like. That is a good point, which is why I am going to predict that Tara is going to die in the Red Fair. You know why? Because people are starting to like her. And I and I predicted this. Go back and watch the Red Fair video a little bit earlier. This is not a spoiler. You guys are going to get me way, way off topic. But I'm having a good time with this. We'll talk about this in the in the countdown and the, uh, the reaction video tonight. So two things to address. Um, Drama King, I definitely think Tara has an escape route. And I do think that Henry stays alive now. Exactly because of what you said. They don't tend to kill off characters that annoy us. They wait until they find a way. They're like, you know what? And that's why you see these on our Facebook page, right? Like, how do you feel about Henry? Give it a thumbs up. Give it a smile. Share it with people. How do you feel about this? How do you feel? Because they know we hate Henry. And they're not going to kill Henry as long as we hate him. What they're going to do is they're going to change him a little bit. And then in season 10, he's going to do something. And we're going to start to say, okay, we like him enough. Then they kill him. That's what I think is going to happen. Um, William, we will um, we'll talk about your, your exact suggestion uh, later on in the year. And it may be midsummer, uh, but we are going to do some live streams, some events. Uh, hold tight for that news. I will, uh, I'll be making some announcements within the next couple of months. That's all I can say to that. But uh, at some point, absolutely. You and I will uh, you and I grab a beer together and hang out. And I got to do a duet with uh, Crystal the Singer Chick. And I'm going to go out and see The Walking Dead nerd in uh, Comic-Con in San Diego. So we got a lot of cool stuff that we're going to do, everybody. Um, that's where we're going to leave it. We're at 24 minutes. Thank you so much. Appreciate everybody being here on this Sunday afternoon. These are extended spoilers. That's all I got. If um, I can't think of anything else that's out there, you guys have seen the numbers. 
I asked a little bit earlier in the uh, 99 Army stream, a lot of people said they're going to up their score a little bit more. When we do the countdown, I'm going to throw the numbers out there again. I think this episode is going to be much better than we initially thought. I'm going to hold true right now at an 8.5. I may tweak it a little bit higher, a little bit lower, but I'm looking forward to um, all the dialogue, all the psychology. I, I think there's going to be just enough action that the the talk is going to keep me entertained. And Alpha, you know, we got to see whether it's going to have a real Alpha accent or whether she's just going to be, it's going to start to blend a little bit more. I guess the more we hear it, the more we might uh, get used to it. All right, everybody, you guys are awesome. Want to give, uh, let me give some shout outs because I haven't done any in the earlier streams. I'm going to start out with the Patreons in the top left-hand corner. Uh, Patreons support this channel through a third-party website. We have like a ton of Patreons that uh, they they make real donations, and uh, we do a lot of advertising and stuff, so thank you so much. If you guys are interested in being a Patreon, uh, there is a link down below. Also, people are asking about gear. There's a link to gear down below and on the 9 and Gaming channel. We've got hoodies. We've got a whole lot of cool stuff. Sponsors. Sponsors are in the top right-hand corner. If you're ever interested in becoming a sponsor as well, if you hit um, people have asked me about this. If you hit the dollar sign, it'll ask you to sign on through 999 Gaming, and it, or, or I'm sorry, through YouTube Gaming. Once you're watching through the gaming channel, then you can sign up as a sponsor. I think it's like five bucks a month or something, but you get highlighted green chat, some custom emojis, and uh, some cool other stuff as well, too. Also, I want to give a shout out to the moderators, Emmy, Steph, Tommy, Kells. Thank you so much for everything that you guys do. And also the Super Chatters. We get a boatload of Super Chatters on this channel too. It highlights their comments. So anytime you guys Super Chat, I'm going to stop what I'm talking about and I'm going to address your topic. So Valar, thank you so much. Pete D, Sheila Beasley, Drama King, New York City, and also William Finney. Thank you. You guys are awesome. Appreciate your support. And we have just hit on our Facebook fan page like 940 fans. That is mind-blowing to me. The YouTube channel has grown. All three of our channels have grown. But we're very particular on the Facebook channel who we accept. And for that to be 940, we're going to be pushing 1,000. That is uh, incredible. So thank you so much to each and every one of you. And my last shout-out is for all the people in the stream right now, the 999 Army. Give me a quick 999. Uh, show your support. Make sure you hit that like button. We got like 150, 200 people have not hit the like button. Come on, everybody. Hit the like button. If you like the rants, if you like the chats, if you like the countdowns, if you like being a part of what we're building, then uh, get this thing up over 100 likes as quick as possible. And uh, type 999 in chat so I can do some shout-outs. I want to say what's up to Wilson, Angie Homan, Glenda Batista, William Finney, I like to fish, T, the Mook, Samantha Coombs, Dark Star Killer, Fluff Salisbury, Sean Locker, Joey the Gator, Gene Alexander, Beta the Chosen One, going to be a lot of whisper action. Sherry Bentley, Hippo in the House, Roxanne Dunlap, Jennifer Flaherty, Angel Gam, Lisa Burnett, or Liz Burnett, sorry. I got a Lisa and a Liz It was all scrolling up. Sorry, Liz. I love you, Liz. Don't hate me for screwing up your name. Ramona Heath, Janet C., Heart of Nixie, Mitch Puddin, The Singer Chick, What's Up, Crystal, Tegan, Karen Chick 7, GW Painter, Edwin Gonzalez, Natalie, Deborah C., Valar, Rebecca Mendez, thank you so much. Lisa Khaleesi, DJ Domstock, Kurt Diggler, Robin Vance. Wow, you guys can see. This army is it's just growing. It's growing to brand new heights. Joyce Andrews, thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. E. Beach, always a pleasure, my man. Good to see you. Deborah Farrell, thank you for being in all the streams today. Mark Kuhn as well. Ella Smith, thank you. Appreciate your insight. Who else we got? Kimberly M., thank you so much, Kimberly. Little Chi721, thank you so much. Deborah Johnson, thank you, Deborah. Coachella Coastal, good to see you. And one thing that you guys will know with our streams, we have a lot of repeat visitors, and that is just a um, super, super call out to each and every one of you. People come back because they like hanging out with each one of you. I'm just a dude with a microphone. You guys are the people behind the scenes making it happen. So thank you so much. If I didn't hit you in a shout-out, I will catch you in the next one. 8 o'clock tonight on this channel, we're going to do our Walking Dead countdown. No spoilers. We just hang out. We chill. Talk about a few theories that are out there. It's kind of our you know, 20, 30-minute pregame show. But boy, oh boy, the uh, reaction video at 1010 is going to be a lot of fun tonight. Look forward to seeing each and every one of you then. So 8 o'clock on this channel and 1010 during the reaction video. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Peace.